now that we have a functioning game, more or less anyway, you're going to want to package this game and putting it on HIO or Steam or whatever platform you might be publishing on. Let's go over some of the things you want to do before looking into that. First and foremost, we're going to come up here into our project settings. And there we're going to look for the default map. We have the default map on Adata Starter. That is the default map that will open up when you start up your project. But you also have the default game map, which can be something different. We're going to set this to being our level 2 for now. Uh, and we might as well set level 2 to be the Adata Startup map as well. You could also make a specific like loading screen map, by the way. Uh, and if you put that in this transition map, whenever you load into a new level, it will load you into this map while it's loading the other level, which can be quite nice. We're not going to do that for now, but do know that that exists. Then, if you have multiple different levels, like a lot of levels, a full game, and you build your game, which we'll get to in a moment, you might notice something odd. And that is when you try to load a couple of those levels, it's not going to work. Because for some reason, and this is really annoying, Unreal doesn't always build all of your levels right into your build. It's kind of weird. So we have a separate setting for that as well. In our project packaging, we have this um, list of maps to include in packaged build. And here we can add specific assets that we want to include in our package build. We don't need to add in every single asset in the game that we're going to add. But for some reason, uh, levels can be a little iffy sometimes. And you might want to add certain levels. So you can choose a file from computer. It will open up your content folder from this project. And you can add in uh, whatever assets you want. Uh, for us, that would, for instance, be the level 1 UMAP and the level 2 UMAP. This should automatically also include all of the streaming levels in the persistent levels that you're including. So you don't need to go through and add all of the streaming levels as well, at the very least. Now that all that is set up, what we'll do is we can come up here to platforms. And I don't have a SDK for Android or HoloLens or iOS or Linux or all of this, uh, but one for Windows uh, I do have. And I do believe the Windows one, assuming you're working on a Windows computer, uh, should be included by default. If not, there's this page on the Unreal documentation that walks you through it. It should be uh, installed through whenever you install uh, your Visual Studio, including the Unreal Engine and the Windows 10 SDK. So you might have to do a little bit of research if you don't have that. If you want a package for any of these other platforms, of course, you're going to need to go through and find the SDK that you need for those. That's not what we're talking about here today, which is going to be focusing on Windows. From there, you can build something as a debug game, as a development build, or as a shipping build. For the most part, uh, the difference here is things like when we used the print string nodes, uh, we probably have one in here somewhere. Uh, if not, we can say print string. This one has a warning on it, development only. And that means if we package this thing as a shipping game, it's not going to include those nodes. So all your print strings that you're using for debugging and weird stuff like that, it's not going to be in the shipped version of your game. So you don't need to go through your entire blueprint code and delete all of those little nodes with a good chance that you forget one or two and those end up in your game. So that's when you use shipping mode. Uh, development and debug are, well, pretty much what you imagine it to be. This is a development build that still includes all of that stuff and a debug build I've personally never actually used, but I imagine it has some more debugging tools. So by default, your project settings will be set to development. So we're going to uh, change this to shipping. You can also change this somewhere in your project settings uh, if you always want to build a shipping build. But by and large, you're going to build your development build 99% of the time, and then you're going to build your shipping build once. <laughs> and then whenever you need to patch an update into your game or whatever on Steam or H or whatever, then you do a shipping build again. But it's so rare that you do a shipping build, comparatively speaking, that there's no real reason to take your project settings all of development to begin with. And then we're going to go up here to our build settings, and we want to change our lighting quality from preview to production, because we're making a production 
quality game now. And then we're going to just to get everything uh, properly build, like our lighting. If we have any baked lighting in Lumen, you probably don't, so that'll be fine. But things like navigation meshes, some other stuff, uh, we're going to click this build all levels button. And that might take a little while to complete. You can just come back up here. You can uh, cook the content, which is just preparing everything to put them into place so that they can be packaged. If your content isn't cooked yet, you will automatically do that when you package your project. So then you just simply package project. You choose a place uh, to package it in. So there we can go um, make a folder called builds or something in our project folder. We select a folder and you can see this output log starts generating a bunch of output stuff while it is building our game and making it into an executable that we can then again upload to whatever platform that we're working with. The first time packaging your game might take a little while. Then after that, anytime you package the game again, specifically if it is to the same uh, file location as well, it will be much, much faster because it's only recooking all of the new changes. And if you have a fast CPU, like in my case, it also goes pretty quickly. And it's a pretty small project. So now we have this folder here, which holds a Windows folder. And in that we have our executable file. And if we open that up, we will see we have the game that we made as a standalone executable. And everything will work perfectly. I did not put back the trigger boxes there, but you can see the code that we made, for instance, for the coins will work perfectly fine and it's just the game that we have made over these past however many parts that this series has been i think this is part 18 and with that we are finally at the end of all this so if you are interested in learning more i've got a bunch of other tutorials about like individual features and making individual things but i've also got an entire course which as of uploading this i think is mostly done as well uh, about taking the next step and going from working in purely only blueprint to taking a step into learning about c++ coding for unreal engine as well so that is i am dead <laughs> so that is also worth taking a look at for now we're going to leave it there for today and i wish you all the best of luck with whatever games you are working on making I also don't have an exit menu, so I need to order four out of this. <laughs> do, do remember to make a quit game menu. That is very important. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas,